SRE was one of the highest paying tech roles in 2023 and actually ranked third on Forbes's list. But it's also one of the most dynamic, interesting and transferable jobs in the tech space. It also happens to be one of the most challenging. But if that all sounds good to you and you're interested in transitioning into SRE, you want to know what it takes to become an SRE? then stay tuned. Hey, what's up? I'm Adam. If you're new here and if you're returning, then you know what's good. I'm an SRE based in London. And in this video, I want to get into a bit of the nitty gritty about how to transition from a role in tech or from a different type of space into the SRE role. I feel like the SRE role is a little bit mystical. Like what do SREs actually do? What kind of skills should I be checking off if I want to be an SRE? And we're going to get into that today, but I'm also going to get into what kind of pathways you can follow. If say you're a software engineer looking to be an SRE or a DevOps engineer, and actually how you can search for jobs that you stand a good chance of getting like SRE roles that lean into your skills and then finally why the AI revolution actually opens up a big opportunity for SREs let's just get into it so what is site reliability engineering and why does it matter well site reliability engineers or SREs are responsible for making sure that platforms websites applications once they're in production that they remain reliable that the end user gets the experience they expect why does that matter well consider this a medical application that doctors or medical staff use to access patient data, maybe even their images from scans and things like that. Now imagine a doctor goes to use their application to treat a patient, perhaps one that's in dire need, and they can't access the site. They can't access the application. It's not responding as expected, or even worse, maybe it's serving up the wrong data. Maybe it's delivering data about a different patient. You can see how the consequences of that unreliable system could actually be catastrophic. And that's just one example. The impacts of an unreliable system can be far spread from customer dissatisfaction and loss of revenue to actually compliance issues and your own employees basically getting sick and tired like if all we're doing is putting out fires because our system is always failing right it's unreliable then where's the time for innovation and design and moving forward so now we see why reliability is important and why having an engineer dedicated to it makes sense but then what kind of skills does the SRE have like how does that translate into preparing for a job well the key skills of an SRE actually center around the principles of site reliability engineering and they're as follows reliability first this is the idea that reliability is the most important feature of your platform like it doesn't matter how many nice things that you can layer on top of it how many updates if the system is unreliable you're building on really weak foundations the second is automation the idea that the sre should be automating away toil that is manual tasks that take away from precious engineering time right so putting things in place so that we can spend more time on the things that are going to be innovative and move us forward the next is monitoring and alerting this is all about seeing into your systems right if you want to ensure that the system is reliable and that you don't have failures and outages, we need to be able to see what's going on and be able to alert effectively, ideally automated alerting. So when something's going wrong, we get an alert sent to us as SREs and we can check it out and potentially before the end user even knows anything has happened. So the next one may be a bit surprising, but it's actually about embracing risk. You're like, hmm, but I thought we were trying to be reliable. The aim is not 100% reliability. We're not trying to foster a culture where everyone's scared to touch everything, right? And we never move forward because if we press this one thing, we might break everything or we might break one thing and nobody wants to do that we want to give enough room so that people devs all types of engineers want to push boundaries and move the application or platform forward but so we can do it in a way that is safe if something goes wrong we know how to do rollbacks and things like that to bring the system back and ultimately it's more in a controlled system there's also the principle of the service level model so this is the way that we manage and monitor our systems in the service level so slos and slis and finally it's about collaboration sres don't work independently we work as part of teams and that's an important thing, a key principle in SRE. Okay, so how does that translate into the skills that are needed to be an SRE? Because I've said a lot of things and you're thinking, that's a lot of things to check off. The thing is, you don't have to be an expert in everything. There are some areas that SREs are expected to be the subject matter expert. And there are other things that we need kind of peripheral knowledge of, experience of. We need to know how to recognize them, but I don't need to know how to design something from scratch. And here's what I mean. If we take a look at this table, which splits things into subject matter expert and things that you need experience and knowledge of, we can see that you're expected to really know the nitty gritties of things like SLOs and SLIs, of monitoring and alerting, of data driven decisions, things like architecting in the cloud, reliable systems, and things like automation. You should have a firm grip on these sorts of things. But there's other things that you need knowledge of and experience of, but you might not need to be an expert. Like I don't need to be a networking engineer to be an SRE, right? So it's in the experience side, but I do need to have knowledge of networking because if there's a networking issue, if that's why my system is 
unreliable. I need to know how to at least identify that, maybe do some sort of work, but then obviously seek help where necessary from the appropriate engineers who are also in the team, also in the wider company to support. A similar thing is like application testing. I don't need to be able to write the most elaborate tests for Java applications, Python applications, all of these things, but I need to understand the job of tests and how they fit into the, the pipeline and how they fit into the software development life cycle, right? And when necessary, I need to be able to test my own code. So if I'm writing automation scripts in Python, I do need to know how to write tests at least to the standard that we expect to check that that works. Otherwise, we're just flying blind basically and hoping that it works all the time. But how do you acquire then some of this knowledge, especially those key subject matter expert topics? Well, it's kind of up to you. There is not many all encompassing SRE courses out there just because of how diverse and broad the role is, right? But you can take a list like this and go through and find resources that align with it. For example, the Google SRE workbook is a great resource for learning SRE principles, or you may look at something like the Linux Foundation for some of their training and certifications. But in case you do want a one-stop shop for everything, I have my Becoming an SRE course that is out on the 8th of January, 2024. So here we go through all the fundamental topics. There's varying levels of intensity for the things that are subject matter expert, we dive very deep into, things that are more peripheral, you know, we get to grips with understanding, but we don't want to waste time. We want to get to the really core of the SRE and what it takes for us to get a job and execute that job within the first few weeks, months and years of our career. So the course has things from theory to demos to quizzes to make sure that you understand what you've been learning right in all of these modules but it also has projects. Projects to support the learning and actually build out a portfolio of these skills right so that you can store them in places like GitHub and link to them when you're applying for jobs and after all of that there's the career development pack where we dive deep into how do you actually get the SRE job right. There's things like the skills tracker and the application tracker but also how do you construct a CV for an SRE role right if you're coming from a completely different space or how do you actually find jobs that align with what you do and what your skills are in your background how do you then interview what kind of interview styles and questions can you expect all of that is in the course and if you want more information on that check the description of this video but anyway back to it so how do you transition into an SRE role depending on where you are now because we know that SREs come from a range of backgrounds and bring their skills from their previous jobs with them I just want to make it clear that some jobs lend themselves very well to SRE like the transition can be very smooth things like DevOps engineers software engineers cloud architects second line support even network and security engineers because of the broad aspect of SRE, you can bring your specialties, you can bring your area of expertise into the SRE role. So you have your foundations and you start to layer on top. So let's quickly go over the software engineer path just to illustrate how this would work. As a software engineer, you are going to be well versed in things like programming languages. Whatever you have been programming in, whatever you've been building applications in and supporting, you're going to have a really good grasp on that, which means things like the automation element in terms of writing scripts to get things done, you should be able to do that sort of thing a lot easier than some somebody else right? because you understand how to turn problems into code already, codification of problems. You're also going to have an understanding of application design and to an extent logging, right? like error handling and how to log effectively and appropriately for those who are going to be supporting it. These are all very strong things to bring in when you are applying and thinking about the SRE position. But where do you go next? Like, What is the next layer to add? Well now you want to start thinking about some of these SRE fundamentals and principles, right? You want to start understanding SLOs, SLIs and that model. You want to start understanding observability and alerting, right? monitoring and alerting alerting, how can we build out systems like this that are functional and useful? After that, you may want to add the next layer, which will be things around cloud and automation, right? Do you understand how to build a reliable system in the cloud or at least support one, right? So if you're going to be working in an AWS environment, you need to be in touch with these AWS services, understand how they work and understand how to build reliability into the way that we use them and the way that we execute with them. If you're not familiar with things like infrastructure as code, then you're also going to start to layer these things on in CI, CD. So that's how the transition transition may work. And finally, what kind of throughout this, you want to start thinking about the principles, the ideas and the attitudes towards SRE, like the end user focus of everything that we do, right? These data driven decisions and things like that. But you can see how you're not starting from scratch as a software engineer or software developer or a DevOps engineer in another example, or a second line support, like you're bringing those skills with you. So I did promise that I would touch on how you identify these jobs and the jobs that are aligned with you. Well, you want to be looking out for SRE jobs where the job description lists things that you know that you are skilled 
holding. Let's go back to that software engineering example. If you are looking at a job description for an SRE role and there's an emphasis on programming, right? And understanding um, code and understanding applications in terms of the larger scale and their design, then you might start to think, I probably have a competitive advantage over somebody who may be from a DevOps background and you know may not have spent that much time in application code, right? So you will want to put yourself forward for things like that. Whereas if you are from the DevOps background and you start seeing job descriptions and there's a heavy emphasis on CI, CD, or there's a heavy emphasis on infrastructure as code and Terraform or even Linux, then you're going to start to think that is where I am well placed, right? That is where my odds are higher, well, the odds are in my favor in an SRE role like that. And because the role can change so much from place to place and companies will define what they mean by SRE, this is why it's so important to look at the job description when you're applying instead of just blindly applying for SRE roles. One caveat that I did want to include here before you start thinking about how you get your first SRE job is if you are in a role, right? If you're in a company and you're aligned with the tech department or you even have access to it. So maybe you're not an engineer, but you work within this large organization or in a tech company, start making connections with the SRE and platform teams and even the DevOps team, if there isn't an SRE team from early on. Right, start thinking about the ways that you can bring SRE principles into the work that you do and how you can maybe take on tasks and work from the SRE or the platform team, right? Could you ask to be involved in some of the tickets? Could you bring some of the knowledge that you have from your current role into what they're doing, right? Offering support. That way you start to build up experience that you can put on your things like CVs for when you're applying for full on SRE roles. Or you can even make the case to your company that you would like to transition into the SRE position. So finally, let's wrap this up by talking about SRE and AI, because I know there's a lot of fear in like the tech market, like, are we all going to be replaced? We don't know what's gonna happen realistically in 10 years, right? But what we do know is that the SRB role is still in demand. And actually there is synergy happening between AI and the development and the increase in adoption and the SRE role. AI platforms also need to be reliable, which means they also need SREs. Take a look at this SRE role here. Do you know where that's from? OpenAI, the creators of ChatGPT, one of the most popular chatbots that are in existence. They need SREs, they need reliability engineers. Or this one here that is from Anthropic, another AI first company who also need SREs. So you can actually meld or like start to join your interest in AI and machine learning if that's something that is of interest to you and into your career. Like it doesn't have to be an either or. You don't have to panic, well not yet anyway, about AI coming to take your job. Despite the turbulence of 2023, it's an exciting time in tech and it's still an exciting time to be an SRE and transitioning into the role. I will go more in depth about the application process, even things like interviews and how to prep in another video. But for now, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.